Hey everyone, hope you're staying safe out there. A few months ago, I uh, created a studio tour video in which I showcased my NAS device, which was this two-bay NAS device by Synology. I wanted to go a little more in depth about how I have everything set up and how I utilize the applications within Synology software to improve my workflow and make things a little easier during the mastering process. Typically when shopping for a NAS device, you're going to want to go with a two bay unit. If you want to go a little more expensive, you could go for something like a four bay unit, but two bays should be just fine. The reason why you want to go with a two bay unit is so you could set up what is known as RAID. RAID is just a networking term that means redundant array of independent disks. What it does is combines two or more disks into one or more logical units for the purposes of either data backup, performance improvement, or both. Now there's different RAID types, such as RAID 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. But the most common types that people use as home users is most likely going to be RAID 0 or RAID 1. RAID 0 is more for performance, while RAID 1 is more for backing up your data. What's cool about Synology is they actually came out with something called SHR, which is a Synology hybrid RAID. What this does is allows a more user-friendly experience when setting up your RAID on Synology's interface, and it also allows you to utilize your space a little bit better. On Synology's website, they have a RAID calculator. Typically, when setting up a RAID, you want to have both hard drives to be the same exact size. So, for example, I bought two 4 terabyte hard drives from Seagate. We could click here on the 4 terabyte icon twice, and it'll insert two hard drives. Towards the middle, you could actually compare different RAID types and see which one suits your needs the best. Now to show you the benefits of having your RAID be SHR versus a typical RAID 0 through 10, let's say you wanted to go all out and buy one of these four bay models instead of the typical two bay models. If we go back to our RAID calculator, if you have a four bay NAS device, you would want all four hard drives to be the same storage size. So a typical scenario would look like this. Now the problems usually arise when you start adding different drive sizes within a RAID configuration. So if we remove two of the four terabyte hard drives and add two one terabyte hard drives, we could compare each RAID type and see what the results are going to be. So if we take a look, we could see there's a bunch of unused space when using the typical RAID 1 setup on your NAS device. If we use the RAID type SHR, or the Synology Hybrid RAID, you can see the space is utilized much more efficiently compared to a typical RAID 1 setup. Now moving on from a little bit of that network jargon, one of the main benefits of going with Synology is their apps and easy to use interface. It won't matter if you're using Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, they have support for all different types of networking protocols, and they're gonna be compatible with most systems. They have many different types of applications mainly for Android and iOS, but they also have a few for Windows Phone. The main app that I use on my iPhone is going to be the DS Audio app. Now, the main reason why I use the DS Audio app is to listen to my mixes on different sound sources. I could go in my car, hook up my iPhone to CarPlay, and play my music just fine from there. I could go downstairs to my stereo receiver and connect my phone via Bluetooth and play my music out of some bookshelf speakers. I could connect my phone to other speakers like a shower speaker or your typical Bluetooth speaker you have on a table. And I could also just listen to my music directly from my phone speakers. This helps out tremendously during the mastering phase as I don't have to fiddle around with sending myself emails or using USB sticks or trying to figure out which USB stick is compatible with which system. All I need to do is set up my music in one folder and I can essentially play it from anywhere at any time. Before I show you guys the actual process of mapping the drives and moving files back and forth, one thing I highly recommend you download is this program called Authy. It's available for the App Store on iOS, as well as the Google Play Store for Android. Essentially what it is is a two-factor authentication program that you could use for a number of different apps or pieces of software that you use in your 
your daily life. Luckily, they also have it for Synology. So when logging into my Synology device, in addition to knowing my password, they will also have to enter a six digit code in order to get full access to my NAS device. So when I start up my Mac mini, the first window that I get presented with is this mapped network drive that automatically pops up anytime I log in. Now, in order to set that up, let's close this window. You're gonna wanna hit Command K, which brings up a box that allows you to connect to a server. You're always gonna wanna start off with SMB colon forward slash forward slash, followed by the IP address of the network share that you want to map. In this case, my NAS device has the IP ending in 177, but since I didn't want the general network share of the NAS device, which has other personal files on it, I only wanted to map the folders that are gonna be relevant to this computer. Once that folder gets mapped, it should pop up on your screen like this. But if you don't always want to go into Finder in order to access that drive, you could go up to the Finder at the top left, open up Preferences, and towards the bottom, you could check the box Connected Servers. And as you can see, it'll pop up on the right here with the network share that I set up. Now, if you wanted to always connect anytime you start up your system, you're going to want to open up System Preferences, go into Users and Groups, and click on Login Items. As you can see, I already have it set up here, but this most likely won't be there for you. So you'll have to go down here to this plus icon and click on which folder you would like to add to the startup items. For me, I clicked on JBear Music, click Add, and it added it to the items that will automatically open whenever I log in. Now within Synology's interface online, when you log in, if you go to the package center, there will be something called Audio Station. Audio Station is what fuels the app DS Audio, which we talked about earlier, which allows me to play music from my phone to any device I choose. By default, within File Station, a folder called Music is generated automatically. And within that folder, you could create a sub folder to separate and organize your music when you want to play it on different devices. So if I want to render out something in Ableton, all I have to do is drag that file over to this network share and it'll automatically sync up with the application on my phone. It's pretty much as simple as just dragging and dropping into the folder, letting the app sync, and within a minute, I'm ready to listen to some music. To wrap up this video, I just wanna stress that having a backup is extremely important, especially for people in music production where a laptop or hard drive could crash and fail at any time. So if you can't afford to spend a few hundred bucks on a quality NAS device setup, at least get yourself a portable external hard drive from either Seagate or Western Digital. They range anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks, but I think it's a worthwhile investment that will protect you in the long run from any PC crashes or hard drive failures. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, a lot of times I'm not getting notifications on YouTube for every comment that comes through on my videos. So an easier way to get a hold of me is by joining my Discord. As you can see, I also have a two-factor authentication for my Discord login from the software that we talked about earlier called Authy. Just a little side note. But yeah, once you join my discord you could go over to the left side post in the help section and i'll try my best to get to you but i typically check this daily and i receive push notifications to my phone anyways i think that's it for this video stay safe and i'll see you guys in the next one